part two. All right, boy. Um, listen, I know you're looking forward to getting in with those dolphins in Australia, but as you're in Thailand, I've sorted out something quite special. I've arranged some training in the art of Thai boxing, and it's with a former champion as well. So, uh, yeah, you should enjoy that. All right. See you later. It's good, isn't it? They arrive at the boxing camp. Young boys are practising kicks on punch bags. It's a bad sign, isn't it? So I'm sat here, it's thundering. It's like the start of a, of a horror movie, you know, like when you know there's going to be trouble. The weather goes bad. The lad there, he's only about 12. He looks like he could do me in. All right, I'm Carl. Uh, yeah. What's your name? Um, Ning. Ning. Yeah. Carl puts on shorts and a head guard. Suck them in or out. Why do we need this for training? This is what I mean. It's not funny, this. I'm meant to be seeing a dolphin. Huh? Come to see a dolphin. Hmm. There's no idea, though, has he? He hasn't been told what I'm here for. Hands up. Aha, good, that's good. Go, one, two. Left light, left light. What? Left light. Quickly, man. Oh, that hurt a bit. One. Two. What the fuck? Friend. What's he doing in here? He's my friend. No come back. Don't care. Do it. Four. Come on. Five. Step your oh, foot, man. Off. Five men. One more. Five. Five. Four. One. Two. Ding, 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 ding. Four. Yeah. This Go, is four, normal. Fuck. Five. This shouldn't be happening. This didn't happen in Rocky. You man, you have to do Rocky's now. He's bite me. <laughs> no problem, man. This, this is a problem. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. How nine. Is that? Three. Okay. Carl collapses onto a bench with his knees glowing red. It's good, isn't it? When I get home, Suzanne thinks I've got carpet burns. That's good. What have you been up to in Thailand? <sighs> right, that's it, innit? That's it. If we just get in the van and go, just say that's great, that. I'm gonna go and look at some temples or something now. We're in Thailand. <sighs> As darkness falls, the pointed towers of a temple are illuminated in a golden light. Carl is driven back to the hotel. Steve sent me a text saying he hopes I enjoyed the Thai boxing training and said he's organised a little fight for me so I can put my new skills into practice. Good luck with that. P.S. It's blindfolded Thai boxing. So it's what I did today, blindfolded. I'm going to go more and more mental as the series goes on. Idiot in a coma. Carl watches as two blindfolded boxers lash out wildly at each other in the ring. One inadvertently throws the referee to the floor. I'm getting in a ring with someone who's going to kick me head in. And what worries me is, he doesn't know how bad I am. He's going to keep going. My eyes might be rolling into the back of my head. You won't know, because they're covered. It's a bit Russian roulette-ish, isn't it? The audience laugh as Carl nervously jabs into thin air, his opponent not yet in the ring. The other boxer is guided in. Carl loses his balance and falls onto the floor that's covered in dried reeds. I've watched Thai boxing on the telly and normally anything goes. You can use your hands, your fists, your wrists, your head, your elbows, your feet, your knees. And yet in this, I, I can't use my eyes. Dangerous, this. I mean, what's going on? I'm meant to be in Australia seeing dolphins, and I'm in Thailand getting my head kicked in. Brilliant. Carl's opponent rolls him onto the floor. Carl is dragged back to his corner of the ring by his coach. Carl steps through the ropes and out of the ring, later in the bus on the way back to the hotel. If it, I mean, if, if that was a reasonable thing to do, blind people would be doing Thai boxing. But I've never seen that. If they were blind and they did it, I'd go all well, fair play to them. They haven't got much sport, have they? Blind. I've never seen blind people doing anything. I don't think they really go out, do they? Only to take the dog a walk, if anything. The following day, Cole listens to a message from Ricky. Alright mate, how's it going? 
hope you enjoyed the uh, blindfolded boxing. You've uh, probably got a few aches and pains, so as a little treat, I've arranged a massage for you. Hard work, reward. All right? See you later. He stands outside a women's correctional facility. Oh, they've sent me to a prison for a massage. Just never heard of it. I mean, yeah, I've, I know I know the thing that, you know, when people have been to prison, they come out and you give them little jobs to do, but it's not normally sort of hands-on stuff, is it? It's meant to be relaxing, having a massage. And yet I could have a murder around my neck. He enters a bright, clean room with mattresses laid out neatly in a row on the floor. He's a massive. What sort of massage is it? Why do they need that access? I suppose we've got to have a bit of help for when they get out. But, I mean, surely there's a line when she's not going to be babysitting tonight. Surely. Oh, fucking hell. Why do you need your arse doing? You don't get stress in your arse, do you? <clears throat> when you know they're in prison, you do want to know a, a little bit more detail, really. Just little things. How long have they been in? You know? Did anyone die? Did you do it on purpose? I think that's three fair questions, isn't it? I'm not having a game of a fucking twister. <sighs> Could have Charles Manson rubbing my legs. You see, this is why she shouldn't be doing it. I don't know what she's in here for. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. The woman locks Carl backwards onto her folded knees. He looks across to another man having his neck gently rubbed. How come he's not getting this? Oh. Cheers. Looking quite stressed, Carl rubs his forehead. Are you having a relaxing time? Not really, not when... Not when I, I mean, I don't know if she was a murderer or not. Prison, Carl, is about rehabilitation. It's not just about punishment. It's about making people feel that they can be, go back into society and have a life that function and do a job like normal people. If anyone's watching this and they want to work in the beauty business and they're thinking, oh, I want to do massages and all that business, I'll go and whack someone on the, on the head with a hammer. It doesn't send out the right signal. She dropped a bollock. She messed up in her life. Got to pay for it. You can't stay... Jack the Ripper, what do you want to do? Make some muffins? Go on, then open a bakery. You've got a killer on the loose who's going, oh, I'd love to rub people's necks. Get out! <laughs> um, listen, Ricky and I know how much you love animals, so we've arranged a little bit of a treat for you. You're visiting King Cobra Village. Don't worry, There's, we've got, like, three medics, we've got ambulances, so um, you'll be absolutely fine. A fully equipped ambulance is parked outside the hotel. How many snakes are there? Well, there's going to be a lot, isn't there? It's snake village. Don't understand why they let them take over. I shouldn't be going in there. I wouldn't if I was here on holiday. I'd go, it's dangerous. It's a warning, that. The fact we have to take medics with us says to me we shouldn't be going there. Cole steps out of the minibus with his trouser legs tightly taped around his ankles. He meets with a guide who is missing several fingers from one hand. Mr. Poli, good to see you. I notice you, you lost fingers. King Cobra. King Cobra. King Cobra. How close should I get? I'd stay back a bit. Oh, Jesus, it's big, isn't it? Fucking hell, you know what's that on the roof? Don't watch that. Right, stop, stop, stay, stay. Is, is that... Is that one deadly? Could that kill me? Yes, it's have venom. So is, is this the one that took the, took the fingers away? Yes. That's the one? And yet you still love it? He's my friend. Anyone can touch this king cobra. No, it's not worth the risk. Ten. Ten fingers. Keep it that way. It's, it's getting a more deadly, bigger one out. Mr. Poli crouches down in front of the cobra. Well, when I first turned up, I saw he had fingers missing. You kind of think, oh, that's a shame. I feel sorry for him or whatever. But then you realise this is why he lost them. Well, I just don't understand. Is there really nothing else to do around here? Are the snakes happy? They're not keeping them in cages, poking them and annoying them. It's a killer one. I mean, I don't understand why you're worrying about them. I'm worried that these animals are being annoyed or exploited or in any way 
quite stressed. I, I don't I don't think they were that stressed. And I tell you why. Okay. What whilst one was sort of dancing about, it farted. <laughs> Who was that? That's the snake. I thought it was him. I mean, I was blown away by it. Really, to the point of I had no idea they even had an arse. It was, it was there. No, but I thought the fart was a human thing. It's something to do with, with like arse cheeks or whatever. The snake is smooth. <laughs> It's that thing of, if you're scared of your boss, imagine them naked. I was scared of the snake. Once it farted, it was like, why am I worried about this? Carl, your boss is Rupert Murdoch. So, h how many times have you imagined Rupert Murdoch naked? OK, you, are you imagining it now? Well, yeah, because cause you've, you've put it in there. What does it look like? Like a tortoise without a shell on. Carl shakes his head, the cobra sticks out its forked tongue. End of part two.